Hello and welcome to Miniature Adventures. I'm Big Lee and this week I want to talk about collaborative painting. So this week I want you to talk uh, about the annual Analog Hobbies Painting Challenge which starts in just a few days time. Now I've often described this event as being a collective painting festival with lots of painters joining in, sharing ideas and sharing their work in a very convivial way. Another good way to describe it would be a collaborative painting project because everyone is cooperating to produce an incredible body of work um, and year after year the body of work from everyone that takes part is just incredible and a huge volume of painted miniatures of all kinds. I've been taking part for several years now and sometimes my output is higher and or sometimes it's lower but I always get a lot of paint on a lot of models and, and I'm, I'm inspired by other painters. This year I'm going to take it a little bit easier than usual but I'm hoping that I'm still going to get a lot done and I'm going to enjoy the spectacle as much as normal. Now the Analog Hobbies Painting Challenge is a big part of my hobby year and usually when I get the bulk of my painting done I firmly believe that collective targets and collaborative painting are good for productivity so I look forward and plan for this months in advance. This year there are over 80 participants each setting their own personal points targets. Points are awarded, are, are awarded based purely on uh, the quantity of a particular scale with different values applied for infantry, cavalry and artillery pieces. Points can also be earned for terrain and buildings and additional bonus points can be earned by taking part in themed bonus rounds. Participants can clean, prep and paint, uh, prime their figures before the challenge starts but no painting so it's possible to hit the ground running pretty early on. Uh, the whole competition lasts for about three months and usually by the end of which we're all completely knackered and painted out but we've also produced a hell of a lot of painted miniatures. And as mentioned earlier participants set their own target values so 500 points is considered a reasonable goal for most painters. This festival painting is more about personal challenge than competition. I mean don't get me wrong there are prizes for the top scoring painters and at the end the participants will get to vote on a favourite piece from amongst all of the entries. Amazingly Kurt the organiser of this event used to do all of this alone no idea how however for many years now he has gathered around him a group of minions who helped to moderate uh, and uh, sign points and help with the, the smooth running of the competition for the uh, hundreds of entries that will come in over the course of the competition. Now I've done this myself one year so I can attest to how much work is involved. Um, so you know I more than willingly accept that the role is very very challenging and hats off to everyone that's doing it taking part this year as a minion. Now as mentioned in the introduction this year I'm taking it a little bit easier but even so preparation for me starts over a month before the kickoff. I'm usually planning what I want to work on, buying models and working out my plan of attack you know, uh, in the summer. I'll spend much of the last few weeks before kickoff preparing models, cleaning figures, mounting them on sticks and priming them and so on. I'm also a little bit notorious for my own personal challenge spreadsheet where I log every individual project when it was submitted and how many points I scored. Uh, I find this has turned into a really great resource for me where I can look back at previous competitions, see what I've managed to paint, what I've achieved and how each successive year compare, compares to those that went before. Usually I will also try to start uh, one of the other things I do before the competition starts is to plan out some of the blog posts to accompany the pictures uh, because trying to write a blog post every week with your photographs is actually a task in itself and can take quite a while particularly if you want to be witty and erudite with your words uh, to accompany your lovely photos so I do try to do a little bit of planning on that so I know what's coming up um, so make the reduce the workload so I can spend more time painting uh, and less time writing. Now my personal targets are usually fairly modest, um, with my personal best being about 1,200 points and my average probably more like six or 700 points. The top painters regularly notch up four to 5,000 points and in the insane blur of productivity the rest of us poor models always can only admire, sit back and look at. So what is the point you may ask? Simply put, without the challenge my painting output would be considerably lower. All painters will at one time or another suffer from a little bit of procrastination. Projects start in the white heat of enthusiasm but inevitably the fire burns down and getting projects finished can become a grinding slog. 
competitions like the painting challenge keep us working, keep us focused by the gentle application of convivial peer pressure. Indeed, collective painting of any kind can achieve much the same outcome, which is why my group, Posters Rejects, have a weekly paint and chat session where we gather on Zoom and we talk rubbish while slapping paint on minis. We've often said these weekly sessions and events like the challenge have got whole armies painted that would otherwise have languished in the pile of shame for many years to come. So what about you? As usual, I'm going to throw this out to you. Have you um, ever taken part in a similar collective painting experience. Have you participated in the painting challenge, for instance? Or have you got together with mates or members of your club to paint for a particular project? And if you have, do you think it resulted in more being painted than if you'd left, been left to your own devices to motivate yourself, particularly after the initial enthusiasm for a project has fallen away? As always, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments section below. So now time for a, a hobby update. It's been a, a, a busy week for lots of reasons, not least that this is time of year just seems to add stuff to the ever-growing stuff-to-do list. However, I did find that I had a few hours to spare on Tuesday while the wife was unexpectedly at work uh, to watch the Waterloo, the 1970 film. Given that I am still feeling fairly bruised, it has to be said, by the experience of watching Ridley Scott's Napoleon, I desperately needed to watch some classic Napoleonic action. The film, of course, has its own problems, but there is little doubt in it is a much, much better depiction of the era. If nothing else, it has a much more memorable and quotable script. I've got it on DVD somewhere in the room, but um, I was able to actually watch it for free on YouTube. So if you haven't seen it before, or if you can't get the bad taste of Scott's Napoleon out of your mouth, seek this film out and cleanse your palate. Now, Posties Rejects didn't get our usual Monday paint and chat session this week, but instead gathered online on Wednesday. The reason being, we were playing the second half of a test game over Zoom using the Age of Reason rules. For those that aren't familiar, this is a set of rules published in the late 90s, I think it was 1998, I think, specifically for the linear warfare of the 18th century. Before I joined the Rejects group, uh, the original members played this set of rules quite extensively. Indeed, there's an excellent campaign map in the rule set called Sport of Kings, across which they fought many games, and they were often talking fondly of. Eventually, they did move on to other rules, things like Coney's Creek, for instance. But for some members of the group, Age of Reason still holds a soft spot. So it was therefore no surprise when Surgit decided to dust off these rules, make a few personal adjustments to speed up play, and then offer to run some test games online for us. On the whole, I think we are quite happy with the changes he made, which considerably sped up the attrition rate and sped up the pace of the game. Having played two halves of one battle across two different sessions, I think we are ready for Surgit to get this game on the table for us to play once again. Of course, it won't be his models, but he has offered to umpire the game, so I'm quite looking forward to that. Now, I'm obviously not as familiar with the rules as some of the older members of the group. However, I quite enjoyed the way these games went online, and I'm intrigued enough to want to play this game on the games table. I hasten to add... I'm not about to rush out and buy some 18th century armies. Well, yeah, not yet at least. Um, but it's definitely piqued my interest for the period. Now, if I end up watching something like Barry Lyndon, perhaps, over the holidays, I may be tipped over the edge, even though that's a rabbit hole I'm desperately trying to avoid. So time for a channel update. So a few weeks ago, I did a video about entry-level equipment for wargame vlogging. During the course of that video, I mentioned that I've been hunting for a new camera, specifically for making these videos, these Sunday talking point videos. I particularly wanted the ability to use an external microphone to improve sound quality because my existing equipment was always meant to be a stopgap and I've never been entirely happy with the sound quality of the recordings. At the time when I made that video, I was lamenting the fact that I couldn't find what I was looking for at a price that I could afford. And of course, as soon as I stopped looking, I found exactly what I was looking for. But it was still a bit more than I wanted to pay, to be honest. However, fate, and presumably the Amazon shopping algorithm, seemed to have other ideas. 
I, I received an Amazon voucher from work, an, an award handed out at my charity's staff conference, in fact, uh, followed almost immediately by Black Friday discounts on the very camera that I was looking at. The end result is it brought the equipment down to a price that I just couldn't ignore. So I did indeed buy a new camera specifically for making this vlog with, and the bundle I purchased also came with a very nice external microphone. In fact, I've been using it for the last couple of weeks, so I'm rather hoping that you've noticed a bit of a difference in the sound quality for my most recent videos. The next step, and something that I'm going to deal with in the new year, so it's not urgent, uh, is to get some acoustic panelling, some, some of that foam acoustic panelling for the walls uh, and the ceiling to, again, to improve, incrementally improve the sound and recording quality in my little room. I mean, when I listen back to the first videos I did on my phone, the recording quality was absolutely horrible compared to where I am now. And I haven't really had to spend much at all to achieve that improvement. So, you know, a little bit at a time, slowly improve the quality of the production. And I hope that comes across in the videos that I'm doing. My old camera has still got plenty of life in it yet and will continue to serve me well for many years to come, uh, out and about shows, other events, and when I need a second camera for recording battle reports for instance, there's more than one occasion when I really needed a second camera. Yes, I'm aware that I've just treated myself to a present before Christmas, but the stars are aligned and I couldn't ignore the vlogcasting gods when they were screaming in my ear, now could I? So we're going to have a workbench update and given the main topic of today's video it should come as absolutely no surprise that I've spent much of the week preparing figures for the painting challenge. I've started to give some thought to some of the side challenges and bonus rounds and have been sorting through my collection of unpainted miniatures for suitable models to fill those categories. As in previous years I, I try not to paint stuff that's just going to end up in a display box. I don't have a lot of room in here for display models. I do have a few on display, but I don't really have a lot of room at all. I'd much rather paint something that is actually going to end up being used on the games table. So I expect that many of these bonus round figures will fit into one of the fantasy, pulp fiction and sci-fi role-playing games that I play. So if you're watching the Painting Challenge blog over the next three months, don't be entirely surprised if you see plenty of D&D, Cthulhu or even Weird War 2 type figures in amongst my usual historical fare. Even if I don't get to play with these figures much, uh, because most of my role playing is done online these days, it's still fun and relaxing to paint something completely different for a change. You know, and aside from my opening Christmas figure, I haven't really bought anything new for the painting challenge this year. Everything that is going to get painted is being pulled from my existing pile of shame. Uh, hopefully by the end of the challenge I'll have a load of newly painted figures and space in the pile of shame for the next lot of figures that I'm probably going to end up buying. So that's it for this week. Uh, a bit shorter than usual, but I still have lots of preparation to do before the change kicks off in a few days. As always, if you enjoyed the video, or if you have anything to say about the stuff that I've discussed, please join the conversation in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and share. And if you want to keep up to date with weekly content from this channel, please tap the bell notification icon. So until next week, stay safe, keep gaming and of course, keep rolling high.